Welcome back to the Argentina Project Podcast, brought to you by the Wilson Center. I'm your host, Benjamin Gadan. And I'm your producer, Katie Hopkins. Today we are joined by our colleague, Duncan Wood. Duncan is the director of the Wilson Center's Mexico Institute. Benjamin and Duncan discuss Alberto Fernandez's first international trip as Argentina's president-elect. Hint, it wasn't to Brazil, so that's the standard first visit for a new Argentine leader. That's right, Benjamin. He went straight to Mexico City to visit fellow leftist Andres Lopez Manuel Obrador. On to the interview. Duncan, thank you for coming back on the podcast. It's a great pleasure to be here. Alberto Fernandez, the president-elect of Argentina, traveled on his first international trip since the election to Mexico. And it turned out to be more of an ideological visit than I think many people expected. There was a talk of the Grupo de Puebla, um, the idea of a new resurgent Latin American left, evocations of the Pink Tide era. Um, It was surprising for lots of reasons. One is Argentina is sort of a ward of the international community, and one would think it's looking for as many friends as it can get from all ideological leanings. But beyond that, it just didn't strike me that AMLO is looking to be a leader of the Latin American left. He doesn't leave the country. He has zero interest in foreign policy. What do you make of the visit and the way it was framed, at least by the Argentine future head of state? I think that uh, it served uh, several purposes. Um, I think for AMLO, it's very nice that uh, he's able to have this image as somebody who is leading by example. I don't see that AMLO is actually ever going to leave Mexico to go and visit other countries and try to help them out. But leading by example and setting this kind of positive example of fighting corruption, fighting the neoliberal tide, really overcoming the establishment. And, you know, AMLO, of course, receives a very positive feedback uh, when he receives uh, visitors like Fernandez who, who talk him up in that way. Um, It was interesting that uh, we heard from Maduro afterwards saying that AMLO and Fernandez are going to lead the region um, in fighting imperialism. Um, Are they? uh, Fernandez may have a a much bigger role in that than AMLO. I think there is definitely a connection between Mexico and Argentina. Fernandez said something very interesting. He said that uh, Mexico was an important country for Argentina because it received so many asylum seekers during the dictadura. And of course, I remember when I lived in Mexico in the early 2000s, many, many Argentines ended up in in Mexico fleeing economic crisis there. So there's quite a a connection between the two, uh, the populations of the two countries. Um, There is, but what there isn't is a big economic connection. They're not not big trading partners. I, I can't envision a scenario where Mexico helps finance Argentina as it tries to get back on its feet. No, and the one sort of real economic issue that, that joined them together, which was the, uh, you know, the idea of uh, being Pacific countries, um, you know, that, that the whole idea of the Pacific Alliance is not really going anywhere these days. So I don't really see that that's going to be uh, an issue that will, will link them together. Some people said that uh, Fernandez wanted to uh, learn from AMLO about how to handle Trump. And I think that's an interesting dimension here. Because AMLO's approach to Trump is basically to avoid conflict with him at all times, um, to appease Trump whenever there is pressure. And uh, certainly from his public statements, Fernandez seems to be suggesting that he wants to have a positive relationship with Donald Trump. He doesn't want to risk that kind of distraction. And AMLO has certainly set a positive uh, example in, in that regard. I'm glad you brought that up. I mean, one thing that strikes me is that maybe it's dangerous for Alberto Fernandez to learn from AMLO on how to handle the U.S., not because AMLO has mishandled that relationship, but because Mexico just has a lot more leverage in their relationship. I mean, this is a country with shared security interests, coordinating on migration, you know, intertwined economically. It seems like Mexico in general can get away with a lot more in the relationship than Argentina could. Um, and so in that respect, maybe AMLO is not the right person to, to look to on how to deal with the United States. Until three years ago, I would have agreed with you 100%. But since the arrival of Donald Trump in the White House, I think that we've seen that Mexico is spectacularly and uniquely vulnerable to pressure from the United States. And all of us who have argued for many years that this is an interdependent relationship, the two nations need each other, all that's true. But when you have a president like Donald Trump, he doesn't really care about any of that and is willing to use his leverage to put pressure on Mexico. And so I think that, in fact, the opposite of what you said is true, which is that Argentina is so far away from the United States that is not vulnerable to the U.S. in the same way that Mexico has proven to be over the last three years. 
Interesting. Um, so I typically like to be a little bit wrong, but not have the opposite of what I say is true. <laughs> Um, so, um, no, I think th there's a lot to that. Obviously, that would generally be true. Argentina has this IMF program it needs to renegotiate. So at least in the short term, the U.S. has a lot of say over, over the future of that. Uh, but you're right. I mean, certainly the geography has allowed Argentina to go through long periods of having almost no relationship with the U.S. But geography also matters in the, in the Mexico-Argentina relationship. I mean, they are distant friends, aren't they? I mean, quite literally. It's a long way. I think both of you and I have traveled from Mexico City to Buenos Aires. It's a heck of a long way. Take a long time to get there um, and so there's as you said earlier on there's not a lot that connects these two le nations um, but there's a lot of uh, rhetoric I mean there's always the rhetoric about Latin American Brotherhood for example which uh, you know in my opinion is a lot of hogwash when it comes down to it um, but there is something there are things that connect these two men and for AMLO we've found out that the personal connection really matters and we've seen it most uh, starkly recently with uh, um, the Evo Morales case and, you know, both Fernandez and Andrés Manuel are big supporters of Evo Morales. In terms of, you know, if in fact there is a resurgence of the Latin American left that, that's meaningful beyond some attempt at a new multilateral organization, the Grupo de Puebla or something else that arises, you know, what content might there be that's of use to places like Argentina or Mexico when you don't have the Venezuelan money that really drove and fueled and financed um, that period, and you don't have again the pink tide commodity super cycle where the individual governments, you know, were able to spend lavishly at home and abroad. I think you're looking at a support group. I think you're looking at uh, uh, like-minded people coming together to sit down and uh, reassure each other that they're on the right track. And uh, you know, certainly in the case of Mexico, where um, the uh, political waters are getting choppier and choppier, where Andres Manuel uh, is facing problems on all fronts that will be a welcome relief for him in so many ways. Duncan, thank you so much for joining us. My pleasure. And thankfully, our producer is a wonderful editor. That's me, Katie Hopkins. If you enjoyed the show, subscribe to the Argentina Project podcast on SoundCloud and sign up for our weekly newsletter at wilsoncenter.org slash weekly dash asado.